Hey guys, it's Josh from Josh's Weight Loss Diary. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make a iron skillet pizza. Now, keep in mind that the crust comes from the carnivore doctor. That's ultimately what I'm trying to show you. I'm not gonna show you how to do the pizza sauce today. Um, you can use whatever pizza sauce that you want, whether it's carnivore friendly, keto friendly. Today I'm going for a keto friendly, but you can make it carnivore. You don't even have to put sauce if you just wanna put your pizza toppings on, your mozzarella, pepperoni, that's all up to you. Now, I am recording this after I've already made it, so I am gonna give you my take on the pizza. I will tell you this, if, if you're going to uh, make this pizza, watch the entire video, even watch until the end because there are some changes along the way, and then of course, um, I'm gonna leave that up to you on how you want to make the recipe. Now, I highly recommend you go and sub, uh, follow, subscribe to Carnivore Doctor and check out the original video, which I am gonna link down below because I feel like I might have missed something. Um, and she gives you some pointers. So watch the original as well, but definitely stand by. I'm gonna show you how I made this iron skillet pizza. So you can see we, we've got two pounds of ground pork. However, I'm only gonna be using one pound. And of course we've got salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, basil, and oregano, three eggs. You're gonna be using three tablespoons of butter. And of course, like four to five ounces of ground pork rind. Now you can see I, I, I made my own crumbles, my own pork rind uh, crumbs. So again, now remember that the, the uh, seasonings are optional, but this is what I'm gonna be using today. And of course you wanna have your mixing bowl. And then I have a 12 inch skillet that we're gonna be baking the crust in and ultimately baking the pizza in. This is where you're gonna wanna go ahead and let's warm up our oven. Um, you can see it's 1.15 in the afternoon. So I'm having like a early dinner. So we're gonna go ahead and go to 375. Hit start, there we go. I went ahead and spared you the uh, me splitting the ground pork. Now remember, it's ground pork, it's not ground sausage. It's ground pork, so it's not really gonna be flavored. Now, she uses a food processor. If you have a strong food processor to blend this up, go ahead and do that. I don't trust my food processor to not burn out because I, I tried this before on another meat recipe. So, we're gonna go ahead, let's add our eggs. Okay, so the first thing after you add your eggs is we're gonna to want to add just a little bit of pepper and you can just dash this in. You don't have to worry about measuring it, just a few little shakes. I'm, I use white pepper because again, it, um, it's got less oxalis than black pepper. Now I want just a little bit of onion flavor in my crust. So I'm just gonna, again, I'm just sprinkling a little bit in here. You don't have to, you don't actually have to measure this, okay? Garlic powder, again, just sprinkling it. And um, now for my, my sauce, I'm gonna be doing a keto sauce. So I typically like to use basil in my keto sauce. So I'm gonna actually take a little bit this is actually ground oregano. Um, you can use the regular um, leaf version, but I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit in here to give it a little bit more of that Italian flavor. Now, we need to add our three tablespoons of butter, which I'm gonna go ahead and melt right now. This is actually six tablespoons of butter, so I'm only gonna put eh, roughly half. Again, we're not exact here. So we got our seasonings. We have our eggs. Now this is where, again, you would normally do all of this in the process. So we're not gonna do the, the bread crumbs or the pork rind crumbs just yet. Those you wanna hold off until you get this thoroughly mixed in here. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get in here with my hands. Yeah, this is, and I'm just really trying to work this eggs in, it's very mushy. There you go, that way you can get a good visual. 
pretty gross, but I'm just trying to work out all the lumps and just, again, she uses a food processor, so it makes it very fine. So I'm just trying to mash through with my fingers, um, just trying to get all the clumps, everything I possibly can. Now that I've washed my hands, we have our liquidy type thing. Now we're going to start uh, folding in our breadcrumbs. Now I went ahead and put almost, I left some in here. And again, what, what your really goal is just to incorporate this in here. And from what I gather from her recipe, this is where you're going to start getting more of that dough consistency. So we just want to incorporate all of that in here. You can see, of course, it's, it's, you know, fir firming it back up. I'll go ahead, we'll add the rest. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. All right. and now I'm just incorporating this in. I could do this by hand, but I feel like, I feel like this is good. Okay, so now we got about this consistency here. And guess what? That beep means our oven is preheated, so that's nice. Okay, we got that there. I'm gonna bring my, this is a 12 inch cast iron skillet in case you wanted to know. And according to her, we're gonna go ahead. Now, I want to, to note that this pan had, if you, when you saw me film it, this pan had grease in here from a previous thing. All I did was take some paper towels and wipe it and let some of that grease still be in here just to keep the pan somewhat, you know, seasoned and coated and things. I don't like to use oil, um, any form of oil. Now, my goal is to start spreading this out. Now, I've personally found that for this type of stuff, a metal spoon works really well, but I'm just kind of getting some initial stuff and you just want to spread it out until you get a, a nice little crust. I'll be back with a metal spoon. So I'm gonna get this metal spoon in here and it, you're just basically working it into, you're just working it into a crust shape. It smells really good. Now you probably could work the middle a little thinner and work the edges slightly thicker almost like a little bit of a crust but i would i would try to make it fairly even so it cooks pretty even i do got a little bit of thin spots here so just work it out work it out and you'll know what i'm talking about once you once you start once you start doing this yourself you'll feel this out i suspect some of it will shrink a little bit too because of the fat content all right, well, there you go, guys. I think that looks pretty good. Let's uh, let's put this in the oven for, um, she said 375 for like 35 minutes. All right, here we go. And it's going in the oven. We're just gonna put it right there, right there. Now set your timer. Well, our timer is up. Let's grab a hot mitt. Ooh. Wow. Okay. So we have, as you can see, we have grease. <laughs> so I don't know what that's going to do. Let me try to see if I can maybe try to drain a little bit of this. Okay. There you go. Drained. Some of the grease, She, the carnivore doctor didn't really talk about this part of it here. She did mention grease, but I don't think she showed, you know, what it looks like when it comes out. But we're gonna let this cool down for a little bit. We'll be right back. Now that we've let it cool down a little, it's still pretty warm, but um, we're gonna go ahead and start building now. I have a keto sauce. This is a, a basic sauce with just like some tomatoes, a little bit of clarified butter, uh, garlic, a little bit of onion powder, um, and a little bit of basil. But that's about it. Again, I'm not really getting into the recipe of it. You can use your, 
either your keto sauce, you can do a carnivore white sauce. This video is mostly about making this style of pizza, like this crust. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna build it. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of build it like a normal pizza. Um, again, just spreading out the, uh, the sauce like I normally would. And I'm not gonna worry about the crust. Like I'll, I'll kind of spread it toward the edges just because I'm, you know, a little more deep dish style, I guess you'd say. There we go. All right. And of course, I shredded the mozzarella myself. So I like to just go ahead. I'm going to lay some of this in here first. Now, if I'm committing any pizza sins, too bad. All right, take your favorite pepperoni. All right, I got some leftover bacon that I threw in the microwave for, I kind of overdid it just a little bit, but I wanted it uh, more crumbly and crispy. It just comes out really good. Um, but however you like your bacon, again, your preference. Now, normally I would also do um, hamburger uh, beef on here. You can, but I'm going to try it today with um, just bacon pepperoni because we have all that pork on the bottom. So I'm not going to stress too much about the beef today. Uh, I think we got a little leftover. Mm. A little chef treat. All right. Got a snack, right? Okay. And yes, we're going to put just a little bit more just to kind of close everything in there, make it look nice and pretty. And here we go. We're getting ready to put it back or we're going to put it in the oven for now. The carnivore doctor said 10 minutes, but we're going to we're going to take a look and see. All right. So here we go. All right, in the oven. And you can see I'm just putting it somewhat on that semi center lowerish rack. Look at that. Oh yeah. Okay. So what I did, okay, just to let you know what I did is I did the 10 minutes like carnivore doctor said, and then I checked on it. I didn't show you guys because I didn't figure, you know, you really had to see that, but um, everything was kind of done. So I went ahead and did broil for three minutes. And you can see, in my opinion, it came out looking perfect. So we're going to let it set here for, um, for a couple minutes and we will, you know, dig into it. So I have my pizza cutter. I'm just gonna just kind of roll in here just to see what it feels like. Mm. I probably should have did six. I probably should have cut it in six instead of eight. But let's just leave it at four. How's that? I went ahead and got me a little knife just in case the edges, if the, the pizza cutter didn't quite get the edges. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Looks very hot. All right, I'm going to cut. I'm going to use a fork first because it's so hot. I am going to let everything cool down a little more and see, you know, if you can eat it like a pizza. I let it cool down for it's still hot. It's still really hot, but I'm going to try a bite on camera here. really good 
I gotta say, um, I like it. I like it. I'm going to eat some more of this and then I'm going to wrap up and let you know what I think. But flavor wise, it's really good. I'm glad I didn't add salt. I had a chance to eat half the pizza and I want to let you know what I feel. So I'm not sure if I did something wrong, but I feel like flavor wise was pretty good. I think it could have used just a little more spice, maybe. Um, <clears throat> Salt content was pretty good. I guess maybe a little more salt. So I do take that back what I said earlier. I guess that initial bite, I wasn't sure. But all in all, the more I ate, uh, the more I felt like I needed just a little more salt possibly. So you may want to maybe salt the meat with like a half teaspoon of salt in the beginning. Um, maybe you could go as much as a, a teaspoon. But here's, here's what I'm also going to say. The crust was not as crunchy and as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a little more stiff um, because uh, when Carnivore Doctor made it, she she kind of, I, I don't know if I just did, it's probably me. I mean, I probably did something wrong, but from what I understand with the directions, I did the best I could and I felt like, you know, when I drained that grease, I probably could have like, hit it up on the broiler a little more, maybe fried it a little more in the skillet just to give it a little, even some more uh, char, I guess you'd say. So I'm not sure, but it was kind of like eating a big flat like meatball cake or something, okay? Like and you got the sauce and mozzarella and stuff on top. So it, it wasn't bad. I ate half the pizza. The crust was pretty thick. So I'm almost wondering if I could have got away with cutting the recipe in half and spreading it even thinner on the on the pan, and that might have made it a little more crunchier, um, like a little more stiff. And then so next time, I'm going to try to cut the recipe in half um, and see if that works. I'm going to add a little more salt. But all in all, it looked great. Um, and it tasted pretty decent. Like I said, it wasn't bad. So if you want to make this, make sure that you take the, the, those things in the vise. Or you can make it my way, add a little salt, eat it like one big meatball cake, so to speak, and see what you think there. Um, either way, it's, it's not bad. And also, I think that if I would have had some grated Parmesan, um, I think that could have been a good addition for this. Normally, I don't, I don't do a lot of Parmesan with my pizza. Some people do. But I feel like for this, I could have definitely had some grated Parmesan, again, because it came out more like a meatball sub topping type thing where, you know, it was like that meat, sub, you know, meatball cake kind of thing. So, but all in all, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give me a like, subscribe, thumbs up, all that good stuff, you know. Uh, but guys, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.